It's generally accepted that a character with a two-handed weapon chooses to emphasize offense over defense. But what if you're some kind of filthy fence sitter who wants both? It may not impress the winches as much to see you cower behind your shield, but now you have both the damage and the protection. So what's wrong with that? Well, let's talk about it. I was thinking about a segue, but those things are too dorky even for a guy who talks about swords in this day and age. So we're just gonna hard transition into rings. Thorum, my favorite sponsor. Are you too edgy for boring mainstream materials like sterling silver and stainless steel? Well, how about dinosaur bone or meteorite, ironwood, whiskey barrel? There's so many cool materials, I couldn't even decide one for a wedding band, so I got two. A fancy one and a workhorse that I don't scratch up. There's so many different designs, from simplistic and pragmatic to elaborate, all handmade with plenty of attention to detail. You can get a sizer to make sure the ring fits perfectly, and if it doesn't, you can return it for a different size. Really amazing craftsmanship. Check it out. Thorum rings down below. There is a historical precedent for this, probably more than one, but this is what comes to my mind right away. The Macedonians. So the Greek phalanx involved the use of a spear and a shield. So you hold a shield in one hand and a spear in the other, whether it be over or underhand, I don't know if that's still being debated. The Macedonians, however, were size queens, so they wanted a longer poke stick. The sarissa, which is a pike which definitely requires the use of two hands. You're not really gonna be wielding a six meter long pole with just one hand. So their solution was to strap the shield to them. So it just kind of hangs there and doesn't need to be held. So now they're able to use both hands on that pike, which works nicely in a formation, unless the entire formation is being flanked, because now your vulnerable sides are covered by the guys to your side. However, in a one-on-one -on -one duel or a small melee, it's much more of a hindrance because if I'm being attacked from over there, it's pretty limited how I can respond to this without needing to use footwork to reorient myself. And either way, the side is quite exposed. You'd think it's mainly this side, right? Because this is open, the shield's on the other side. But this is actually less of a problem. I can still attack this way. I could even strike over here. It's not as much of a problem. This side is actually more of a problem. Sure, I've got the shield to cover me here, but as soon as somebody manages to get close enough to grab it and open me up here, or works walks around the shield, now I'm, I'm way more limited because I, I can't really attack beyond a certain point. Like, if you're attacking me from here, there's, there's not a whole lot I can do. Now, obviously, this is a lot of passive protection. Basically, it's only my head sticking out and my shin. So when wearing a helmet and shin guards, I'm generally quite well protected. If I wanted to manually protect my head with a shield, I can kind of duck behind it, but it's not that easy without actually holding on to it, compared to no coverage beyond what I can do with the weapon. What about the different type of shield, like this targe here, where I slip through the strap and hold on to the grip? Well, it's got pros and cons over the other option. The obvious advantage is now I have actual control over the shield, I can move it around, it's not just passively dangling there. So if I need to defend my legs, I can do that, I can temporarily let go of this, or I can try to work with it and I, I can just move it a little bit more, right? Which of course I also have to, because now it's less coverage. Problem is when I try to hold on to both the grip and the haft, it gets a little bit in the way. So if I try to align it properly, this kind of pushes the shield a little bit out of the way so it doesn't cover me as well as it would otherwise. If the grip was closer to uh, the rim of the shield, or if I, Okay, I can't fit my hand through here, but if instead of a grip you have two straps that the arm passes through completely, then you would be able to hold on to this a little bit better. Of course, you don't really want your hand to extend past the rim of the shield because then you're losing the protection. And so this is uh, not quite as limiting. You can move around a little bit better in some ways, but I'm really not a fan of this, I have to say particularly with a shield like this because it makes you sluggish. Because now I have to, whenever I want to move the weapon, there's extra weight here. So even just moving up to try to cover my head, 
is slower and more exhausting this way compared to not having that shield on there. And I really don't see the point with a spear, neither do you because there is none on here, because it's much more effective to use it with one hand. Sure, you have a lot less control over it compared to two hands, this is way stronger, but you can compensate for that to an extent by couching it. Because this way you can resist an enemy a little bit better, particularly if you make contact, you can support the haft with the shield without being stuck to it like this. A smaller, lighter shield like this buckler would be quite a bit better in that regard, but um, it can't really be center grip for this size because um, you, you can't hold on to it properly. In order to hold it like this, the shield isn't doing as much for me. Let's see, like, I can do it, but it's somewhat limited. At that point, it's better to go with an itty bitty buckler like this, just for the hand protection. Because this way I can, I can keep it out of the way, so I can just enjoy the hand protection while still using the weapon pretty much normally. Like, it's a little bit more awkward than without, but not much. It allows me to do everything I could normally do. And yeah, I'm, I'm good here. It doesn't protect the whole lot other than the hand, but this is rather important if you think about the way the hand is out there when you're using the spear. You know, it, it leads, generally it has to. So a sword user, for example, can try to bind and slide the blade down to get the hand or otherwise try to snipe the hand. So it can be useful to have that little bit of extra hand protection here to work with. In case of a weapon like this, the, the offhand might face forward like this if you're in a rear guard, so you're loaded to be able to strike quickly. So this way, that hand leads and could use some protection. But of course, the moment you're changing position, that doesn't help you. So could you use two bucklers, one on each hand? Just get gauntlets. I mean, this is more protective than gauntlets. It's actually uh, more solid, but that, I think that would be a bit much. I think this setup here is about what Clint uses in Vandal Hearts on the PS1. He's shown with a shield and both hands on his sword. If I remember correctly, his hand is actually sticking out past the shield. So uh, he's just saying, screw it, just two straps. And uh, so that way he has some passive protection, not so much for the hands because they're outside, but there's still more protection because there are plenty of attacks where you would snipe the elbow or generally the leading arm. So that's useful, but um, the problem of course is now this gets in the way. There's a bunch of uh, angles that become either awkward or straight up impossible. So I can do a right side diagonal cut, no problem. I can come right back up with a false edge cut because um, that, that's not gonna work. <laughs> this would be extremely awkward. Uh, if you uh, were to let go and use it with one hand, of course, that's not a problem, but that's not what we're talking about. Then the other side, that's fine. Coming back, basically, I, I can only do it like this. I would have to use the false edge because this is not really happening. Vertical, of course, is fine, but one thing I'm noticing is this really messes with the edge alignment because now I have some asymmetrical weight pulling. You can probably hear the difference. This is not just the speed, but also the edge alignment much easier without. Feels much more sluggish this way because now if I want to throw a downward cut like this, engaging that hand is just, just some extra inertia I need to overcome to accelerate it. This is faster and takes a lot less energy. Again, the tiny buckler is okay because this allows me still to use just about every technique that I would without. It is a little bit awkward because you're constantly messing with this and um, you tend to kind of scrape and crush your fingers here. So uh, gauntlets would be a good idea, but it works if you want that extra protection. This size is already too much, in my opinion, because now 
it's a whole lot more awkward. And for a lot of techniques, this shield doesn't do anything for me anyway. Because if I cut like this, I need to get the shield out of the way. I'd rather use them separately. Because I feel a lot less restrained, even with a fairly large sword like this, this is nice and light. So I don't really have a problem using this around and still keeping myself protected. All right, back to the big guy. So because it's strapped to me, it doesn't slow me down as much because I can just move it out of the way. And this, by the way, is shown in medieval imagery. I can cut over it or off to the side and it doesn't really make that much of a difference other than it limits angles. I find the sword a lot less awkward in this position because if I'm being attacked from over there, I can still fight over top of the shield, right? So it's just there. And then either I move it out of the way as much as I have to, like this, or I cut over it. It is awkward, but not too terribly so. And uh, yeah, do I have certain angles that are less accessible or more difficult here? Yes, absolutely. But I can also just kind of turtle up here, right? I can approach and I'm pretty safe in the knowledge that I can really only be attacked in the head or in the shin. In case the opponent targets the shin, I'm just gonna do a leg void, get it out of the way and cut at the same time, like this. If they target the head, I can use a sword to defend against that or counter cut, things of that nature. Or I could try to raise it up and then switch to single-handed. Because like at any point, of course, I can just let go of it and use it like that. One other concern with the pole arm is switching sides. Because I always find it awkward to strike from this side like this because the half gets in the way, like it hits you. You can tuck it like this, which I've seen done quite a bit. I don't find it as effective as switching hands and striking much more powerfully, being able to follow through more and being able to come right back like so, which you can't do here, but you can normally do it. Yeah, not so much. I mean, you can, if you accept that every time you jam your shield under your arm, where it's just in the way and doesn't benefit you. What this one, it basically barely works at all. So if you want to avoid that and switch hands, you can. It's just that the shield is a little bit in the way. It has its upsides. I generally think that you're losing more than you're gaining here, but that's a matter of preference, I suppose, opinion, and also training. If you train enough with it, you might minimize the drawback some more. So either way, hope you uh, enjoyed this nerdy analysis. Thanks for watching and have a good one.